Thank you for joining me and welcome to a whole new build series. So first off, thanks to everybody that liked, commented and watched my Rosewood build. I really, really appreciate that. I'm so happy with that guitar. What I'd like to do now is to build another version of it, but I think I'd like to do it in walnut. So it's going to need to be semi-hollow because walnut is heavy as hell. So let's pick out some walnut. We'll take a quick look at the wood and then we'll just dive in and start building. OK, so this is what I've got picked out. I've got a really stunning walnut top. That's going to really darken up and the grain's going to explode when I actually finish it. So then I've got a hell of a chunk of dark walnut, which is rough planed, but it does have quite a nice grain running through it. So the back of the guitar is going to be pretty too. So a single piece walnut neck and I think a Gabon ebony fretboard because I don't want to take any attention away from the top. I think that's going to be a, a winner. So my single cut design is also a double bound guitar and I want to stick with that. And if I'm going to go with an ebony fretboard, I'm thinking a pearl black double binding. Yeah, that's a plan. Let's, let's start building. So again, single piece neck, so I've got some carbon rods going in. Sorry about the background noise, there's a farmer who's decided to, to mow the grass on his olive grove. Now what I'm starting to do is to taper the carbon rods because it just seems like a bit of a better idea just to taper it with the neck as opposed to have them running completely straight, which is what I've been doing previously. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's just measure these. Okay, that's the channels done. So I'm using a slow cure epoxy for the carbon rods. So I'm going to pop these in and then just clamp it down and leave it overnight. So while the carbon rods are curing in the neck there, we can go ahead and get the fretboard slotted. That's all slotted. I'm happy with that. I think what I may as well do just at this point is to cut it to rough shape and get the ends taken off and then it will all be ready for gluing onto the neck. So let's do that now. Hello. So that's the neck and the fretboard done and roughly shaped. Well, the neck is at final dimensions and the fretboard is overhanging slightly. It's going to need flushing up. So for this build, I thought I'd just have a chat about the proportions, the thickness of the fretboard to the neck, what I use for the headstock and how long I make the fretboard in order to do this kind of fender style transition here. So if we talk about the thickness first, so I have an overall thickness of 26 millimeters. So I have six millimeter thick fretboard and a 20 millimeter thick neck blank. So that's also pretty much bang on the dimensions that Fender use. So I make the headstock thickness 15 mil on my guitars because firstly most tuners are set up to be installed on a headstock between 14 and 16 mil but also and more importantly that's how much drop I need over the nut in order to get a reasonable string break angle. But it's also just enough that if I'm using staggered tuners then I don't tend to need to use string trees. And the last part worth talking about is just the transition from the headstock up to the fretboard. So I leave an extra 15 millimeters on the fretboard past the nut. That for me is just enough so that the slope up to the fretboard can be nice and gentle, but you still have enough left the other side of the nut in order to be able to hold it in nice and secure. So there's a couple of tips anyway, so maybe some of those were of, of some use to some people out there. Okay, so let's thickness the headstock and then we can get the fretboard glued on. So I think I have a slight change of plan. So last night I ordered two walnut burl tops, which look really, really beautiful, but I do think they would work better as semi-hollow guitar tops than the one that I'm planning to put on here. So I wanted to make a couple more 
solid body versions of this anyway because all of these guitars I'm making are for the Italy Guitar Show next year. So if I build this one as a solid body then I've got another one in Mansonia wood that I really want to use because that's just awesome colours. And then I could do a poplar burl and a walnut burl one as a semi-hollow. That sounds like a plan. Ah, I also um, thought of a name for this guitar. So this shape, which is my single cut shape, same as the Rosewood one I did, will be called the Journeyman. I was thinking of those sort of journeyman guitarists that work their way around the country and are solid and dependable and reliable and I thought that would be an awesome name for the guitar. So let me know what you think but from now on this will be referred to as the journeyman. What we'll do now is leave this to dry and start prepping the bodywood. So after I said I was going to clamp this up and then prep the bodywood I realised I couldn't do it because my levelling beam is clamped to here and I need it to join my top. So let's crack on with the neck. So normally I would do this with the spindle sander but I want to try just using the Iwasaki because I think I'm just going to prefer doing it this way and it gives me the chance to do a gentle into a slightly steeper curve or play around a bit. That's to the point where I can sand it. That's actually really, that is really not, that's such a better way of doing it. So I'm super happy with that transition. I'm going to do them all with the Iwasaki files from now on because it's so much nicer doing it that way than it is with the spindle sander. So we're ready for radiusing, but before that, I'm going to share this because these have just arrived. So these are Shala Da Vinci tuners. We'll see if you can see them or not. So they've got the open gears through a little lens and they are absolutely stunning. The German design and built really high quality and I love the idea that they're made in Europe. So those are going to be standard on all my guitars from now on. They come with different buttons in different colours but I'm definitely going to use them. I, I love them. So a brief detour but I wanted to show you those. So let's get on and radius this and as always we're going to do a 12 inch radius and then I'll be able to mark out and do the inlays. There are a few just really relaxing jobs when you build a guitar and this is one of them. Okay that's the last one in. Let's just get these roughly filed down and then I can pop in the side dots. So that's sanded up to 5000 now. And this is a really rewarding stage in the bill because once you get to about once you get above 800 the grain really starts to come alive. So from here it probably looks just like a black, a jet black ebony fretboard, but all of that real fine grain, the grey and browns coming through, has just come to life. I would say that's ready for fretting. I think I'll just quickly carve out the nut first. So fret wire is one of those things that's really worth thinking about if you're making your own guitar because the temptation is to go with medium jumbo frets because that's what gets put on most guitars but these are medium height narrow frets and I haven't met anybody that doesn't love them given that the frets are the one of the main tactile components of the guitar it really does pay dividends to have a bit of a, a look around and test out some guitars that have got different frets on and see what you love because it's actually not something I ever really considered before building guitars. So the frets are in and I've trimmed the edges down. 
So that's as far as I'm going to take the neck before I make the body. So let's get the bodywood prepped and make a start. Okay, let's get this glued on. So as soon as that's dry, I think what I'll do, I've left a fair bit of walnut around the edge. So I'll probably take just half off with the spindle sander and then I'll have a go at it with the router. And then we'll take a look. So that went really well. The top's glued on perfectly. It's dead straight. It didn't move. I didn't get any chip out from around the edges, so I'm super happy with that. But there's something that didn't go very well, which I'm going to need to show you because it's part of my other video series. So we had a huge downpour of rain this weekend, and it's the first one we've had in months, and I had a leak in the workshop roof. And what was immediately underneath it was my olive telly which has been sat in literally in a puddle of water for the best part of the weekend so it is completely saturated I can feel it underneath now it's just soaked and see whether you can actually see I mean I even tipped a trickle of water out of the inside of the sound hole so that's that's how wet it's been. I can see that I've got dark lines all around where the binding is into the top where water has just soaked into the end grain for the top. So as it stands I've got absolutely no idea what to do with this because I don't think I can salvage it and the one thing I'm fairly sure of is that irrespective of whether I dry it slow or fast and underweight that it's not going to be straight at the point it's dry. It's just feels wet. So I'm going to I'm going to need to have a think about what to do with it. But right now, it looks like a write-off to me. So that's so that's a real shame because that's a guitar that I was intending to do, to use as a show guitar. But that's absolutely not going to happen now. And I've got a fair bit of money just in wood and binding and time in it already. But the neck is absolutely fine. It was, it was nowhere near the body, so the neck I can reuse. But as it stands, I think I'm just going to need to build another body. But that's the only olive top that I had, so it's not going to be olive. It'll need to be something else. So we'll see. I mean, you'll find out when I do the next, um, the next video for that series what I've decided to do. So anyway, on to something that is going well, which is this one. So first thing I need to do is to get the neck pocket done. So I'm going to do that now. Then I can think about getting the pearl black dub winding installed. So the neck pocket's in, that went really well. I'm going to, I'll double check the height when I come to setting up the bridge. But, or when I come to positioning the bridge, but I can tell from where that's sitting already, having done quite a few of these, I don't think I'm going to need to, to deepen it. I think that's going to be dead on. So, so to be honest, I'm a little bit rattled from the catastrophe with my, um, with my olive telly today. So I, I don't think I'm going to do any routing and cavities and things for the rest of the day. I think what I'll do is to just tidy up these ends and get the binding done because that's a nice relaxing job. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to get everything attached. I'm going to get this perfectly fitted before I do any bonding. And I'm going to be using the acetone method because this is a celluloid binding. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can just demonstrate the technique for heating the binding and bending it into place before you do the bonding. So I've got this part here taped. So if I 
just gently push the binding to there so there's still a bit of a gap I'm going to just gently heat it with the gun and then apply some pressure this way and it should just naturally pull itself into the channel I've got there So let's just try the same thing with this inside curve. You can probably see there that it's pulled itself right into the channel. So there's no gap there at all, so I shouldn't have any filling to do there. So my head's back in the game today, which is good. It was a good idea to do the binding yesterday. So I haven't scraped the sides of it. I've still got to do all of that when it comes to finish sanding, but I've just sanded the top and the back flush with the body so that I can get on and do some more today. What I'm going to start on is the bridge placement and the string through holes, because with the neck pocket done and the bridge done, everything from that point onwards, if those are correct, is much simpler. So I've got my standard position marked out for where I want my pickups to start. So I'm just going to mark the humbucker cavities. And I'll go ahead and get most of this routed out with a force and a bit and then tidy it up with the router. And all of a sudden it starts to look like a guitar. So pickup cavities done. I'm going to mark up the tone volume and the switch position and get those drilled next. I'll drill the positions all the way through from the top of the guitar and then I'll flip it over and do the cavity around where those holes are at the back. That's the control cavity done. So you may be able to see it's in two different depths. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I just need to get the rest of the wiring channels drilled and the jack socket in and I can start carving a neck. That's the uh, construction of the body complete. So I can just mark up where the neck heel meets the body and then I'll be able to start carving the neck. Okay so the first bit I'm going to do is the thickness of the taper on the neck. So these guitars might look kind of Gibson style but the feel is very much Fender because that's what I love. So the necks are 42.8 millimeters at the, at the nut, 56 at the heel. I'm going to do 21 and a half millimeters thick at the first fret and 22 and a half thick at the 12th fret which is modern tele or strat territory okay that's the first set of facets marked up now let's do the fun bit and carve it Okay, should we take a look? Okay, let's do the test. <laughs> awesome, that, I love that neck. I went for a perfect C rather than a modern C because that, that really is my thing. It's so comfortable. I think I'm gonna just stick with that for all of them. Actually, the weight of this one is really good. It's definitely, it's lighter than the olive and the rosewood one, the last one I did, but that's probably mainly because of the olive neck. 
But the unsung hero of all of these builds is the Okame, the bodywood, because it's it really is. It's light, it looks good, it transforms under finish and into this lovely kind of dark golden brown. And it's just kind of heavy enough that even with a heavy neck, there's no neck dive. Balance is always slightly towards the body, which is awesome. So there we go, let's give you a little twirl. Really happy with the way that the the black pearl binding looks with the ebony fretboard. That's exactly how I hoped it would look. And I'm definitely going to go with a high gloss finish for the body. I'll go with an oil finish for the neck and the fretboard. So that's all the construction finished on this guitar. So the next episode will be the finishing and the sound demo. It will cover everything else. So the other part is that the build I'm doing with Todd for my reimagined Strat is underway. So the first episode of that will be out on Sweet Tea, on Todd, on Sweet Tea's channel. And while this one's under finish, I'm going to start another one. And my wood didn't arrive, so I can't show you that. It should be here any day now. But I've got lots of choices, so I think I'd like to do the next one either in Mansonia or perhaps in Poplar Burl. So I'll have a think about that, but either way, there'll be a new episode of something soon. I quite like this format. So all the construction being in one video and the finishing and sound demo in another. Just two videos per build. I like that. I'm going to stick with it. And as always, thanks so much to those of you that have liked, commented and subscribed and just supported me as I'm going through. I think I've just hit a thousand subscribers, which if I have is going to be amazing. So thanks again and I'll see you soon.